I want to show you a little bit of what it's like to, to develop with the uh, uh, VS Code extension and Fusion. So let's open a model here. I got one called Rolling Metrics. Great. So Rolling Metrics has some CTEs, calculating some metrics like daily orders, daily revenue, daily active users, and whoa, look, there's a to-do, a comment. It says, hey, Elias, calculate seven-day rolling orders. OK, so rolling orders. That means I want to look at, for a date, go back seven days, sum up all the orders in that window, um, and attach that as a value in the row, right? I said it. I said window, right? So you know where we're going. We're going to use a window function. Um, so I'll uncomment this CTE here. Great. And I am going to uh, start by looking at what columns we have available by hovering on the star, just like that. Look at that. It shows me the columns right there in line, including their data types um, and uh, uh, the column names. I can hover over daily orders here to see the CTE code that I'm selecting from, right? So all these developer ergonomic features are powered by Fusion SQL comprehension. I'll move forward with my data transformation. So I'll select metric date. I will sum the orders. And I want to do them in that window. So over, um, let's do order by metric date. And then I'll say rows between uh, six preceding and current row. Save it. OK, gnarly window function syntax. Holy smokes. Um, and then I'm going to alias the result of this column to orders seven days. And the last thing I'll do here, I want to uh, eliminate any rows that don't have orders in the last week. Right? So I'll do where orders seven days is greater than zero. Save the file. Whoa. Hey, look at that. I get some error feedback. Now, you all know in DBT Core, in order to detect this error, um, I would have to run this up against the warehouse, potentially incur a compute cost, right? just to know that there's an issue here. But this is actually a complex issue. And Fusion is telling us something with it. It's saying that, hey, the query engine actually it, it applies this filter before evaluating the window function. Right? That's just the order of operations that it does things. Um, and, and lucky for us, uh, Teradata, to their credit, introduced the qualify keyword. Right? Snowflake and others followed suit. So when I save the file now with qualify, Fusion says, you're good to go. This is going to run. And that's because qualify moves the evaluation of that filter to after the window function has been calculated. And Fusion knows all of this. This is what we call a semantic pass in the compiler to detect an error like that. So this is the first real developer experience improvement. Fusion gives you real-time error feedback as you're writing the code. But let's say I actually want to see the data that just this part of the query produces, this CTE. Right? For those of you uh, not using Fusion in the VS Code extension today, you'd probably come down here and you maybe comment out the rest of this. right? <laughs> And you'd select from daily seven-day orders, maybe? Yeah. But many of you probably spotted this little handy utility that Fusion now provides, Preview CTE. So when I press this, Fusion will use SQL comprehension to construct a query that just spits out the output from this section. Come on. Yeah. That's pretty handy, huh? That's pretty cool. And it even considers in-CTE lineage, right? So it runs daily orders first. It skips the other CTEs that were unused and just runs this one. That's what SQL comprehension can power. Moving down here to combine daily, right? I have a CTE here that's got some left joins. OK, why don't I just go ahead and remove those? That feels safe, right? <laughs> oh, I also removed that, but Fusion told me. Nice. Um, and now I added zeros there. Look, SQL comprehension. Good. OK, so I removed the left join there, right? No problems. It compiles now. It's, it's pretty good, right? Uh, OK, I'll try a build. How about I do a build, right? That should validate whether or not my changes are good. And the build uh, is going to run the model and the tests. Look at that. It's working. So we're all good to deploy this to production, right? No problems? Why are you all laughing? No, no, no. Many of you SQL aficionados out there know the change I just made is potentially very dangerous, right? Could have far-reaching implications on the data. And a scenario like this is exactly why I'm very excited to show you our newest feature from the VS Code extension, compare changes. When I press this compare, yeah, I heard that reaction. When I press this compare button, Fusion's going to run a data diff to look at exactly the precise impacts to the data that changes to this model will make. There it goes. Woo! Come on, it ran, and it has very, very significant impacts. Look at that. 2,184 rows have been removed by just removing that left keyword. That's 99.7 percent of our row count. Oh my god. <laughs> Imagine, right? Yeah. And deploy. No. Um, so 
This is exactly the right use case for compare changes, right? If I go to the primary keys tab, I can actually see these removed records. If I go to modified rows, I can see the column level impact, right? How the data changed per column. And the columns tab here shows us, hey, for each column name, uh, what actually happened to it. So it's value change or data type change, column position. This is a super powerful new feature. I'm so excited about this one. This totally increases our confidence after making development changes. Um, and this feature is coming soon to DBT platform customers using the VS Code extension. So I am very, very excited to roll this one out. OK, moving on. Compile uh, doesn't just look at one file at a time. This concept, I want to I kind of get in all your noggins, right? So if I go to staging website hits, uh, on line 14, I'm selecting this column campaign type, right? Um, and let's say I actually change this column to campaign source. The minute I save this file, look on the left-hand side here. Watch the files. I save it, and then Fusion immediately highlights files red downstream that have been broken by this change. Yeah. Real-time impact analysis, huh? Yeah. And so no more like deploying up to CI CD, no more like running this model and all more downstream ones just to know I made a breaking change, right? But I actually do want to, I do want to rename this column. And that's why we have a feature, column rename propagation. If I use rename symbol here, and I type this source, when I press Enter, Fusion will rewrite all downstream models to reference the new column. Woo! Come on! And it even works in complex scenarios. Like, check this out, right? I'm using the column in a window function. It still gets that. That's good SQL comprehension. Yeah. Right? Um, OK. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with impact analysis, it doesn't just look at model level changes. It also looks at config changes and macro changes. Yeah. So, um, DBT Project YAML, right, line six here. I've got a profile that's pointing to Snowflake profile. All right. We talk a lot about cross-platform data development. Imagine I wanted this project to be compatible with both Snowflake and Databricks. With Fusion, this becomes quite easy. I can make a one-line change here. I can use a Databricks profile locally. The minute I save the file, Fusion again highlights red the models that are not compatible in Databricks. Yeah. And line seven here, it says no function generator. So this is this SQL, ignore that. Um, <laughs> just press preview CTE. There's, a, there's an error in the file. How can it run? Right? Um, so uh, this, this SQL here is produced by a macro, right? So I can use our utility here to see the precise SQL that this macro produces left to right. And you'll see on line 20, I'm using the function generator. And this is a bespoke function only available in Snowflake. And Fusion knows that and flags it immediately. Cross-platform compilation. That's cool. Okay. 